Oh right, just going to do a video showing that Jesus Christ himself actually refutes the Roman Catholic magisterium. I did a video showing other scriptures, just you know, a select a, a select few scriptures refuting this Catholic doctrine of the magisterium, which according to paragraph 85 and paragraph 100 of the catechism says that only the church has the authority, only the church authorities, the church leaders have the authority to interpret and you know teach from scripture basically. And the, essentially the ordinary, you know, common laity don't have the right to interpret scripture themselves and let the Holy Ghost guide them when you really get down to the fact of the matter. But I'm going to show some scriptures of Jesus Christ because one of the favorite little catchphrases of Roman Catholics is they'll say, well, Jesus Christ didn't leave us the Bible. He left us a church or Jesus Christ never said to read the Bible. Well, I need to point something out. The Jesus Christ of Roman Catholicism is not the Jesus Christ of God's word. The Rome's Christ is not the Christ of Scripture. So when Catholics say that, that Christ started the Roman Catholic Church, they're correct because, you know, their Christ is not the Christ of the Bible. So their false Christ did indeed start Roman Catholicism. But the Christ of, of the Bible has nothing to do with Roman Catholicism. But that's a bit of a side note. But here are actually some examples of Jesus Christ himself instructing people and even rebuking people uh, for not only not reading Scripture, but also instructing them to even as enemies to read Scripture. So if Jesus Christ, so Jesus Christ may have never said that exact wording, read the Bible, but you're going to see that he even instructs and rebukes his enemies for not reading and understanding scripture. Okay. And how do you read scripture if it's not written? It's that simple. So anyway, it's, just, it's proven that there was written scripture back then too. But here's the first part. Jesus Christ expected even his enemies to correctly interpret the scriptures and get their truth by reading and studying them. Okay. Luke chapter 10, verse 25 to 28. And behold, a certain lawyer stood up and tempted him, saying, Master, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? And he said unto him, What is written in the law? How readest thou? And he answering said, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy strength, and with all thy mind, and thy neighbor as thyself. And he said unto him, Thou hast answered right, this do, and thou shalt live. Um, He's telling him, like when he asks him about the truth, you know, what should I do to inherit eternal life? Notice that Jesus Christ tells him, you know, what's in the scriptures? How do you read the scriptures? Look, read the scriptures and see what's, and find out. He's telling him to go to the scriptures. How do you do that if there's no written scripture back then? Okay, he may not have said that exact wording, read the Bible, but he's telling them what is written in the law. Okay, there was written scripture back then, like I said. Don't want to keep repeating myself, but. Next point is that Jesus Christ kept quoting scripture in a manner that shows he expected his people to have read and understood it. Luke chapter 4, verse 16 to 20. Luke chapter 4, verse 16 to 20. And he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up, and as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day, and stood up for to read. And there was delivered unto him the book of the prophet Elias, uh, Isaiah, I think I said it. And when he, when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he hath anointed, anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor, to, and hath sent me. He hath sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, and recovering of, the, of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. And he closed the book, and he, and he gave it again to the minister, and sat down, and, and the eyes of all them that were in the synagogue were fastened on him. And if you're wondering, the verse he's quoting from Isaiah is Isaiah chapter 61, verse 1 to 3, I believe it is. That's the part of, of the book of Isaiah he's quoting. But notice how he's quoting it in a manner that he that in a manner that shows he was expecting them to have read and understood what it was saying. Uh, also, I want to point something else to, out too. These signs and wonders that he did were not some kind of show that the Charismatics and Pentecostals do. The signs and wonders he was doing was a fulfillment of prophecies like in Isaiah 61, verse 1 to 3, and also Isaiah chapter 35, verse 5 to 7, among other scriptures too. So just a bit of a kick at the Charismatic movement too, which by the way is yoked up with Roman Catholicism, so what a surprise. Next point is that Jesus Christ even instructs his enemies to search the scriptures. John chapter 5, verse 39 to 40. And again, how do you search the scriptures if it's not written scripture? It's that simple. John chapter 5, verse 35, to, or sorry, 39 to 40. John chapter 5, verse 39 to 40. Search the scriptures, for in them you think you have eternal life, and they are they which testify of me. And ye will not come to me that ye might have life. Search the scriptures. You open it up and look through it. That's what he's telling him to do, essentially. So he may, again, he may not have said the exact wording, read the Bible, but I mean, I mean, it's like, what do you think searching the scriptures is, is meaning? It's that simple. Uh, next point is that on multiple occasions, I thought I heard something move. On multiple occasions, Jesus Christ rebukes his people for not understanding and not reading the scriptures. Uh, Matthew chapter 12, verse 3 to 5. 
Matthew chapter 12, verse 3 to 5. But he said unto them, Have you not read what David did when he was hungered, and they that were at that and they that were with him, how he entered into the house of God and did eat with the shewbread, uh, which was not lawful for him to eat, neither for them which were with him, but only for the priests? Or have you not read in the law how that on the Sabbath days the priests in the temple in the temple profane the Sabbath and are blameless? Okay, notice that he's saying, Have you not read? You know. They're supposed to read the written scripture. And he's rebuking them for not the, again in context. He's speaking to the Pharisees, and he's rebuking them for not reading and understanding uh, what's written in the Psalms uh, from David. And also, uh, for example, the, in verse three, he's quoting from First Samuel chapter twenty-one, verse three to six. And also, in verse five, he's quoting from I believe it's Numbers chapter twenty-eight, verse nine to ten. I believe it is. Could be wrong, but again, this isn't in my notes. This is just uh, just top off the top of my memory. But you see there, he's expect them to have read and understood it. Okay, Matthew chapter 19, verse 4 to 6. Matthew 19, verse 4 to 6. And he answered and said unto them, Have you not read that which was that he which made them at the beginning made, made them male and female? And said, For this cause shall a man leave father and mother, and shall cleave to his wife, and they twine shall be one flesh. Wherefore they are no more twine but one flesh. What therefore God hath joined together, let no man put asunder. And again, he's quoting from uh, the Old Testament there. He's quoting from, I believe it's Gen Genesis chapter 1, verse 27, Genesis 5, 2, and also Malachi 2, 15. Again, not in my notes, just off the top of my memory. Anyway, next point is that also continuing on, is that here's more examples of him rebuking even the Pharisees for not reading scripture. Matthew chapter 21, verse 42 to 45. Matthew chapter 21... Verse 42 to 45. Jesus saith unto them, Have you never read in the scriptures the stone which the builders rejected? The same is become the head of the corner. This is the Lord's doing, and it is marvelous It is marvelous in our eyes. Therefore I say, say I unto you, The kingdom of God shall be taken from you, and given to a nation, bringing forth the fruits thereof. And whosoever shall fall on the stone shall be broken, but on whomsoever it shall fall, it will grind him to powder. And when the chief priests and Pharisees had heard this, heard his parables, they perceived uh, that he spake of them, which obviously he was talking about them in that in that context there. And of course, Matthew chapter twenty-two, verse twenty-nine to thirty-three. And also, just heads up, not not the best at reading things on a computer, so just obviously bear with me. Matthew chapter twenty-two, verse twenty-nine. To 33. Jesus answered and said unto them, You do err, not knowing the scriptures, nor the power of God. For in the resurrection they, they neither marry nor are given in marriage, but are as the angels of God in heaven. But as touching the resurrection of the dead, have you not read that which was spoken unto you by God, saying, I am the God of Abraham, and the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. God is not the God of the dead, but of the living. And when the multitude heard this, they were astonished at his doctrine. And again, the verse he's quoting from is i believe it's exodus chapter 3 verse 6 and exodus chapter 3 verse 15 to 16. again not in my notes just you know off the top of my memory but that's the bottom line he's expecting them to have read and understood scripture so jesus christ may have not said the exact wording read the bible but he's saying you know have you not read in the scriptures you do err not knowing the scriptures you know search the scriptures you know what's written in the law you know how do you read this Okay, he expected even his enemies and people that were against him to have read and understood written scripture. So yes, Jesus Christ did in fact tell people to read the Bible, just not, 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 not that exact wording, I'll put it that way. So this whole Catholic magisterium is a false doctrine. This whole Catholic you know, little catchphrase of, well, Jesus Christ didn't leave us a, ch didn't leave us a Bible, he left us a church. You know, it's a false doctrine as proven in these verses and many others too, by the way. Uh, but these are just Jesus Christ himself refuting this Roman Catholic false doctrine. Because why? Roman Catholicism is a cult. That's why. Roman Catholicism, just like any cult, takes the word of God away from people. It's that simple. So don't be deceived. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with all the brethren. Goodbye. Thank you.